to remind you that we need to stop a god from destroying reality. This is the most action-packed episode we've had so far. It's in your hands now. Go! Holy shit. Just threw a wobbler, mate. Assassin strike. <laughs> I am the most complete fighter in the world. If you got yay, motherfucker. You can call it the art of fighting without fighting. Stick around. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate on me. Dodge this. Welcome to episode seven of Dodge This in Action Movie Podcast. My name is Simon Fielder, and I am coming live, but in a pre recorded way from what some people are calling the windiest city on earth. And those people are just me. I'm in Amsterdam, and a Storm Eunice is in town. Matthew. How are you? Yes. And is your garden furniture okay? It's not actually. Our barbecue blew over <laughs> and it's a hefty one. So, yeah, you know, this is, in terms of our own action uh, going yeah. on in the background, this is the most action we've had in a long time. <laughs> okay. Well, it's that's taken a turn. You pay for quality in an outdoor barbecue, but, uh, you know, they're not always stormproofed, are they? It's attached to a gas canister, which you think <laughs> oh, God, which <laughs> would make it heftier. Uh, also, that, that amazingly won't be the only time I mention gas canisters this podcast. No, it's a very, it's like a video game trope, isn't it? Anytime I see a gas canister, I'm like, I should probably shoot that when there's a crowd around it. And I don't think that's a healthy, yeah, 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 it's not yeah. a healthy way to think, is it? So we are, the storm is called uh, Eunice, like the um, lady who famously won gladiators and then was asked to come back as a gladiator. Uh, I know Matthew's a big fan of that fact. Um, I, I, I am, but also anyone who's listening outside of the UK, enjoy that Google. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I enjoyed it um, when I said it half an hour ago when we recorded this intro for the first time before my computer took a shit and decided it didn't want to record anymore. Little don't, people the wizard's don't, there. don't let them see that, Simon. Tell us what Sometimes film we're it's talking nice. about. Okay, well, I'm excited for this one um, because it's the most topical one we've done. While we while we like to try and um, keep pretty up to date with the films, it's very rare that, that that it dovetails with the release of a movie. But just yesterday, Netflix uh, dropped Fistful of Vengeance, the follow up to the Wu Assassins show, and so we are we've hopped right aboard so that we can chat about that and hopefully, you know, while everyone else is. Uh, chatting about it you know just be part of the conversation you know yeah 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 Yeah. before we get into that though um what have you um what have you been looking at what have you been seeing what What have you been consuming outside of the action genre uh two films this week that i'll give a shout to little indie film that's on prime a sci-fi indie called prospect very good very good okay won't won't go into that in too much detail but it's a lovely little sci-fi indie and also i took myself to the cinema to watch uh, the new Jackass movie, and you it took was yourself. That's nice. I watched. I watched it on my own in the cinema. It was about six of us in because it was the middle of the day, and I'll be honest, I've not laughed out loud so much in a long time. Mate, I my plan for this evening was to go and see the new Jackass movie, but I think Eunice has had other ideas since all the uh, public transportation has been shut uh, down. Well. I'm sad because I do want to see it. I think it's going to, and you're right. I don't. I also don't laugh out loud very much. So maybe it will tap back into those 20 years ago boyhood memories. Oh, living. We're living in the the old days today. Simon, yes. What other things can we look forward to in cinemas or likely straight to TV soon? Mate, you're talking about trailers. I imagine. I am. I am. Do you, but don't you want to hear what I've watched? Mm, yeah, not really. That would be not the fair that thing. Bothered. That would be the fair thing. I thought not I completely bothered. forgot to ask you on pod. No, I I sense what's happened is because we're up against it for time due to the um, fuckery of my computer. Now we've got to rattle through this. I will quickly touch upon um, two things that I've seen um, since last we podded. One, um, Reacher, the TV show. Oh yeah, um, which we talked about, and then that um, un- was un- unleashed onto Amazon Prime. Um, oh my God, my table just blew off my balcony. Holy shit. <laughs> I, I'm not even kidding. Mate, I'm on the seventh floor. 
Oh fuck! Do you want to stop? I might have to just go yeah, and look. Just pause. Go I'm look. So pause. But fuck. keep this in. Pause. I'm pausing. No. In a severe lightning storm, you want to grab your ankles and stick your butt in the air. He's right. If you're going to get hit, it's the safest orifice. Yeah, I like to get hit by lightning once. You know, see what it's like. And we are back after what can only be described as a slightly unexpected turn of events. Um, jokes about there being Storm Eunice kicking around, and then, um, which I guess she heard, and she threw my table off a seventh floor balcony. She threw a wobbler, mate. Um, to be fair, though, Simon has gone to search for his table, and it's gone. <laughs> the table? It's gone. It's going to... Has it's been going to be fed a six part podcast. To the gods. I don't. <laughs> there's some water outside, down ground level. Like it's the Netherlands, so there's. It's not a canal. It's not a lake. It's like a pond. I don't know. There's there's bodies of water. I can only assume it's gone in there. I went down, had a look. The wind whipped up and basically sort of pissed half of it all over me, and that I didn't want to get close to the edge because I felt like a Mr. Bean situation would occur where I was thrown into the lake. So. I think the it's lake has eaten great. my table. Um, and in the gonna be all right. intervening time, I've brought in the rest of the furniture that was on the balcony. It's that was that was tense. Add that Let's to get the back um, to the action. The Sorry. nightmare of recording issues, and this is the most action-packed episode we've had so far. Where we left off was Reacher on Amazon Prime. Whew. Are you familiar with Jack Reacher? I seem to recall you saying no. I'm not. I, I I know Jet Reacher is. I've seen bits, but it's it's never done anything for me. Okay. Well, I've seen. Um, I've read. I think just two of the books actually, uh, and seen both of the Tom Cruise movies. And we touched on this before. A lot of people were like, "Cruise isn't Reacher. Reacher's this huge Hulk guy." Anyway, this new that Alan fella from um, what's He's it? He's too big. He's too big. <laughs> he is too big for a normal human, but he's actually bang on for this character. Um, and I've I devoured Reacher actually. Um, I absolutely um, banged through that in a week or so, and uh, I enjoyed it. It is. I think it's captured the tone of the books perfectly, and the books are a bit silly and a bit cheesy, and that carries into the show for better or for worse. Would I recommend it? I'd say give it a look. And if you like the first couple of episodes, I, I think if you like the idea of like a detective who headbutts people a lot, then then, then you're in. He's basically Batman without the cape. Yeah. <laughs> no, I knew I knew that would uh, that would ruffle your feathers. We don't have time for that debate, do we? No, not right Ugh. now. The only other thing I watched um, on Netflix was Beyond Skyline, the ten years later, I think, sequel to the quite quite bad. Um, alien invasion thing is that was the original one with the guy from scrubs from scrubs absolutely correct yeah uh he yeah. does not uh, reappear in this sequel however frank grillo does and eco uves <laughs> both appear in this oh does he it's it's i mean it's a batshit movie but it throws everything at it i'll say this there the reason i watched it is because there is another podcast about action movies probably the one of the most popular podcasts about action movies called Action for Everyone. And the guy who runs that podcast called Liam O'Donnell wrote and directed this movie Beyond Skyline and the movie after that, Skyline 3S. <laughs> so I thought, I'm going to have a look at it, see what it's all about. I mean, it's got big aliens, it's got martial arts, and it, I have no idea how it got made, but fair play for getting that movie made. It's batshit. I'm, I'll give it a go off that. It <laughs> yeah. sounds right in my computer. You might quite like also, it. I like, <laughs> I like how you always like disassociate, sometimes you disassociate action from sci-fi, yet, you know, the 80s had things like, the 90s had Predator and Aliens and things like that. Sci-fi and action, perfect bedfellows. No, you're absolutely right. Um, and, and this, yeah, this overlaps those two in a way that, you know, is... Un unexpected and um yeah i really i i can't describe it in any other way apart from it's just batshit it starts and then it's fucking like pedal to the metal and it just never lets up and none of it makes any sense but it 
Uh, it's, should I, it's should I, should I watch it and should we talk about it? Oof, I don't think I want to talk about it or as okay. a full episode, but I think I would love to hear your thoughts on it on a future episode. I will. I'll, I'll give it a watch in the next couple of weeks. Uh, um, all right. Now trailers, I think it's time. Simon. Trailers. Here we go. Welcome to party, pal. Yeah, we got some trailers for you. Okay. Um, where do you want to start, Matthew? I think we should traditionally start with our boy Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a trailer section without him. Since the last episode, I'm sure fans of action and fans of Bruce will know he has his own section in the Razzies <laughs> because of how many films true. he's got out this year, which we've been live following if you've been listening to the podcast. But yeah, we got one called Day to Die. Simon, what are you thinking? Well, this one, it seems like they were stretched to even have enough footage to feature Bruce in the trailer, if I'm being honest. He is in clearly one to two scenes of this movie. It's really a movie about Johnny Drama, right? From Entourage, Kevin Dillon. <laughs> Frank Grillo, again, making another appearance. I mean, that that guy is working. He's busy. Again, he's not in the trailer loads. So I feel like as, no. as Grillo's stock is going up, maybe his appearances in this level of movie will be going down. But you'd hope... I know it isn't the case, but you'd hope maybe they're holding back the best stuff for the film. But Yeah, <laughs> like all the best trailers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? This one, of all the, the Bruces we've covered over the last uh, few months, this, to me, looks like it might be the best of the Bruces. Yeah, I will, I will take that under advisement. It, it looks like it is probably an absolutely tolerable film. It looks like, though... Someone who's watched action films for ages and liked all the worst bits of action films may have wrote the script. And I don't want to be like that bad, but like it's it's got that sort of it's so action, it's comedy vibe, like there's one less job and all that sort of Yeah. Do you know who you're stealing from? Like everything you've heard elsewhere just crammed into a best of, which I like. It does feel like a movie that would have been made in the nineties or two thousands. Which, which leads me, yeah. leads me quite nicely, actually, to the next trailer, which is The Contractor with old uh, Captain Kirk, Chris Pine. Chris Pine, yeah. And uh, what's the other guy called who I love? Ben Foster. Yeah, 310 to Yuma. He's brilliant in that. He's brilliant in um, 30 Days of Night. He's just great in everything he does. Well, big, a lot of time for him. Fingers crossed that that reign continues. Because this movie also, this look, this is like... This looks good. It looks pretty entertaining. It looks like the type of movie that would come out like once a month about 10 to 20 years ago. It's like a mid-budget action thriller, you know? It's like a thriller with action in it. It's got fucking Kiefer Sutherland in it, mate. What else do you I, need? I really like the look of this trailer. I think, I think, do you know what I like about this? It looks like, obviously, it's it's centered around human drama. And even though, again, it's like the old thing of how can you get someone who's out back into a game? Oh, family. It's got all the drives you expect. But I think this is going to be... I think this is going to have twists. I think it's going to have turns. I think this could be a sleeper hit when it comes out. Really? Oof, yeah. That is a bold place to place your chips, Matthew. I think this is going to be 100% a three-star movie. And I've got time for that. We've talked about them in the past. And I wish there were more of like that. Um, it, we haven't seen it yet. It, it could be amazing. It could be dog shit. But it looks like that mid-budget, couple of names, solid action thriller. And I, I wish there were more of them. I think, I think it's going to be, I think it's one of those films that is going to be, this is how I'm going to hope for, one of those films that you watch, you go, that was great. And then you never watch it again. Never. And then yeah. one day it's on a TV quite late at night. And you're like, and you go, oh, this, this looks great. fun. And then about an hour in, you're like, I've definitely seen this. No recollection. It's like you get men in black at the end of it. You can't remember any of it. But yeah. I'm, I'm holding out hope. No, I'm absolutely ready for it. Um, last one. The, what I would say is our greatest trailer of the week. <laughs> There's just, where do you start with this? BMCM, that's what I'm calling it. BMCM. Yeah. Do you want to um, try and pronounce it in, no, in absolutely, Hindi? Absolutely I not. guess it's in Hindi, I think. Bada Mian Chota Mian. 
I ap- oh, you did well. There. I apologize to everyone who speaks that language. You, which we think, we think from a quick translate means something like "big brother, little brother." But you, to just to be fair to Simon here now, you found this trailer literally what five minutes before. Yeah, we started yeah, yeah. That is fair. Although I I saw it earlier in the week, and I think it. I was just like, "Fucking hell, this is amazing!" And then I forgot to put it in the document for the episode. So then I was like, "Oh my god, what was that thing with Tiger Shroff?" Where there was just a load of guys with it lasers looks on their guns incredible. that forget how to point them. It's not even a trailer. It's basically an announcement that there's a Bollywood action entertainer starring uh, Tiger Shroff and Akshay Kumar. One of the old guard of Bollywood action cinema meets one of the new guard. Hence, I guess, Big Brother, Little Brother. And it also seems to be a remake slash, you know, reimagining of an old Bollywood movie. But this is insane. It's it's a teaser that basically says these two are going to be in a film at the at the end of 2023. And none of the footage is going to be in the film. It's ridiculous. But again, like they they did the thing which I I just love this about Bollywood action films. Like they've clearly got a really slick drone shot of London and then they've got a pretty decent CGI helicopter going over it. But it's like absolutely not a real helicopter. Nothing about the way it flies over that airspace is real. No. And it's also completely irrelevant. And then it cuts to what looks like a, a sewer. And then there's some like uh, SWAT team guys with laser sights. And then Tiger Shroff showing. stands in front of them. Even though they've got laser sights, they can't shoot him. And then he shoots them all and does martial arts and guns. I'm going to say as well, every time I go away from Tiger Shroff and come back <laughs> and I see, his, see his face again, I was just amazed by how good looking that man just is. Love him a little bit more. That man, he's just you get to see his abs as well. Phew. Oh yeah, the nice like, close slow motion, glistening out. Oh, it's, this film is going to be the best film of twenty twenty three. It looks like it could be like a, a contender to take war off the top spot at this point. I mean, yeah. I I'm I can't wait. We have to wait ten one one year and ten months to see it. <laughs> I don't know if they've even started production on it. Oh my god! What an incredible announcement, though. That's that's the way you announce something rather than a little uh, footnote in uh, Variety or Hollywood Reporter. Woof. Yeah, that was great. It was great. Excited about that. Well, before we go from the trailers, I feel like I should give you the stage because the Doctor Strange um, trailer came out of the Super Bowl, and while it's not an action movie, I know you're a big Marvel fan, and also. It is directed by Sam Raimi, who I'm a big it fan is, of. It is, it is an action film. Is it? I d- again, you can't <laughs> disassociate something that is probably going to be 70% action sequences. Yeah, that is true. Because it's Marvel. It's just you, the superhero genre has become its own genre, so you separate it from action yes. the way you view action. But it technically is an action adventure or... Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. If we're categorizing it like that, but as you say, I do think Marvel and comic book movies are a sort of genre unto themselves now. They've, they've definitely become like a superhero comic book has become its own genre, but it's definitely superhero action. Yes. This one looks absolutely batshit. It looks amazing. I mean, this is the, this is the thing. Like they've all, they announced today or yesterday that there's going to be no more Avenger films. Like, the Avengers as a team in the MCU are, are done. Wow. Like, that doesn't mean they, they won't do new Avengers or anything like that. So I think stuff like Multiverse is the future of Marvel in terms of it's very hard now to go back to a film which is just one of the heroes or one of the main characters being on their own because the universe is so dense. And I think this is the way to do it. Same with Spider-Man, where you've got a lot of people coming into a story. It's what they're doing in the comic books for years. But yeah, you in phase four, it's, it's hard now to not need to watch 10 years worth of films. It's a bit really mental, isn't it? Every, everything is the all-star team up. Yeah, there's, there's stuff that looks like it's been um, sort of set up in the What If series. Oh, fuck off, mate. I'm not watching that. It's amazing. I haven't even seen Spider-Man yet. It's great. I, long story short, I think this is going to be Marvel's, obviously they're setting it up to be this, it's going to be Marvel's film of the year. And saying that's coming off the back of like even though spider-man was tail ended last year i think it's going to be an absolute smash for them and i am very excited yeah i'm excited that they've brought raimi back to be fair because uh yeah he's he smashed those first two Maguire uh spider spider yeah. men um it'd be it'd be interesting to see the um 
Because Raimi has such a unique style. Yeah. There are a couple of shots in that trailer that were like classic yeah. Raimi. I hope they've I hope they've left him to to go full Raimi on it. That would be incredible. Yeah. Well they they the one of the good things about um Marvel and one of the things that's made them stand out above DC and DC's only just coming around to this way of thinking with things like the Suicide Squad is they have they let the director and, and the people who are the creative team have their sort of voice on it. And like and that was really present in sort of um the third Thor film when Taka directed yeah. it. Like and you really saw it. So yeah, like you say, having someone like Raimi who style is so unique. Like the only way they can go after that is Wes Anderson's uh, <laughs> Doctor Doom or something. Which would be incredible. Uh, yeah. Wes Anderson's Fantastic Four. Speaking of Marvel, also, also uh, and this is uh, this has to be the last uh, trailer, but um, uh, Moon Knight, I watched the trailer for that, and I, I have to say that looks quite good. Do you, what do you Moon Knight? What do you is, know about it? Is it's going to be? Uh, I think Moon Knight's going to be. It's, it's got a lot riding on it. So <sighs> very quickly, they've set up this side of the MCU in the Etern- in the Eternals a little bit. So. Fuck, I forgot of Eternals. I haven't watched that either. Jesus Christ. Oh, don't. Just don't. Uh, but yeah, they um, that side of Marvel, it should be interesting to see. Let's not go too far into it, but yeah, the trailer's great. I think it's going to be a really strong, standout, unique Marvel film. It looked dark. Is it a series? Yeah. It's a series. Um, I don't know, actually. Maybe. I can't remember. I can't remember. I, I, but I was intrigued because I've never heard of... Um, Moon Knight, so I don't know the backstory. So, uh, um, well, if you want uh, ninety minutes, we don't have time, <laughs> Matthew. We don't have time. We, I've got to keep an eye on the balcony in case anything arrives or leaves it. Uh, also, we are um, about twenty minutes in. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. Got to get this film done. <laughs> so far, it's mainly um, being about Storm Eunice. She has uh, she has swept in here and uh, and stolen things. Um, all right, let's uh, let's do it. Crank up the jingle generator. I'm about to press the button. Boop. And now, our feature presentation. Dodge this. Yeah, it's that time. It is the Netflix original, the straight to Netflix direct sequel to the not the sum of its parts ultimately i suppose fairly average woo assassins from 2020 i believe it's a feature length follow up to that it's called fistful of vengeance it's got four of the main people back from woo assassins and it is directed by a guy who directed uh, some uh, at least one and maybe some of the episodes of woo assassins i full disclosure matthew watched the entire series of Woo Assassins when it came out uh, in 2020 because it had eco in it and I was very excited. It had some quite good action in it. However, I suppose if you break it down, it means I watched about eight plus hours of that show for maybe... 20 minutes of good action which i don't think is a great return on investment i think well this is the weird thing because i haven't seen were assassins okay and... this is good because going into this people will want to know if they have to well this this is the thing because i knew that going in and to be fair to its testament and to its hindrance they kind of you don't need to have seen were assassins but that does mean this whole film is very exposition heavy there's never a thing where it's not explained. And it does, I think, really jar how I felt about the characters in this. Because it's such a it's such a weird one, isn't it? Like you say, um, the people in this, they're top level like action stunt guys. Like uh, yeah. like we say, your your boy, you love him, don't you? Eco. Your Huge boy. fan of Eco. Not a fan of his agent or whoever is um getting him roles, but uh I think that's just the nature of the business, isn't it? You don't know how these things are going to turn out. This is a weird thing. Um, Because I think this is a good role. I think when he signed up to this, it's great. Um, Again, I don't know what Wu Assassin's like. I don't know what the fan base is like. But I get the sense that this probably 
try to get too much into too little time when you come in off the back of a series that probably has more character development, more backstory, but you get enough to know what it is. What I think this film lacked, and this was the thing that pulled me out of the film a lot of the time, was I'll buy into the magic, I'll buy into the world building, I'll buy into the supernatural, that is my wheelhouse, I love that shit. Uh, But what I didn't have was Jeopardy. I never felt like a character was in danger through this entire zero state entire thing. I always knew that from the the moment you see the is it a bad guy, isn't it a bad guy? I was like, well, I know where this film's going now. And there was no sort of twists or turns. What I will say for it though, has some beautiful fight scenes, which I think should have been more fronted and more sort of real world. Like there's a there's a fight on the um staircase in an office building and had that been in say the raid that would have been a 20 minute scene it would have been brutal it would have been gritty and eco would have done what eco does i think it would have been great but they just felt like it got a bit um what's the movie with nick cage the treasure hunting one felt like it got a bit like that like national treasure national treasure that's the one it's uh felt like now we've gone to this place we've learned a tiny thing to get us to the next place where we'll meet a person who will give us a bit more exposition to move us on to the next place. Oh, the baddies have turned up. They've done this. Let's go to the next place. And yeah. I think like it's a shame in certain ways because there's some bits in this that were just great. And if they just... I never thought I'd say this. If it had maybe 20 more minutes in this film what? That, focused, that focused just on extending those action scenes, I think it would have really rooted you for it. But the thing is, they were so clean with the action scenes that you never got that sense of jeopardy like there's a great bit where they uh we talked about gas canisters earlier <laughs> they spoiler alert they topple a car a car with some gas canisters by shooting them out and then they're trapped in a van and they have to get onto the street and the action that little fight scene on the street was it was beautiful but it just felt like you're just having this fight scene because a fight scene needs to be here like Never worried that someone's going to die. Never worried that someone's going to get injured. Like, that was what I think really bothered about me. Because when they fight, they're so good at it. But they just, they obviously just, for whatever reason, behind Netflix, it just felt, yeah, it didn't have the time to breathe. Like, it's a beautiful bit in that fight scene where, um, come on, brain. It, Uh-oh, it, he's it, live IMDBing. I'll film that. Uh, it's Lewis, Lewis Tan. It's Lewis Tan. I couldn't remember which char- character it was. <laughs> he, uh, he, he downward kicks a walk and it flicks up and hits someone. That in the head. was a good moment, actually. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful bit of action. And like, I mean, I think you can claim that for your action replay. I had oh, forgotten that. 100%. It made me really smile. And again, like one of the things I didn't expect about this going into War Assassins, I thought it was going to be kind of just clean, good choreography, good sound effects. I didn't expect it to be so much blood and. Gore and I it was, was like, a little bit bloody, wasn't it? Yeah, and I liked that. I thought this is really brutal. This is really great. And then it gets to like the end, and I just kind of zoned out. I was just like, oh, of course they're going to beat this guy. There's a bit where um, someone had a sniper rifle for absolutely no reason. I've I've literally watched it less than 24 hours ago, and I've forgotten that bit already. They have a sniper rifle. They have the jump on the the main four, and they fire it about two meters ahead of their feet for no reason like they want to kill these people and i just think again like why have you wrote in a sniper rifle and not at least if you're not got the goal to kill someone off at least have them damaged and it yeah. sort of make make the drive to get this done deeper like this gotta keep them around for the yeah. for the potential sequel well, this is the thing. It's 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 like an extended episode, isn't it? I think that's. What... I mean, that is literally what it feels like to me. I don't. If if you want to finish your thought, because I feel like I'm going to open my Pandora's box, and it's like, no, you a, you open I've it got I've, a lot. I've rambled there. You go. <laughs> I was very excited about this going in because the trailer made it made it look like it was going to be really good, <laughs> and I realised how innocent and naive that sounds when I say it out loud now, because I think I'd also forgotten that the series was not quite the sum of its parts. And like it had some good action, a lot of supernatural bullshit that wasn't particularly interesting. And it dragged out and some episodes were a bit boring and blah, 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 sort of, you know, that Netflix uh, 
stretch thing that it that used to be more of a problem I think than now when it's like uh you this should have been less episodes because it's quite a couple of them are a bit bit boring um I watched this last night and I'm glad we didn't record the podcast directly after I'd watched it because I was I was just I just felt sort of furious about it oh really and now I've had a bit of time to simmer down but I went because I went in with hoping it was going to be good. And I think ostensibly it is a bad film. And I hoped that we would get past episode seven before we encountered a film that I had very little good to say about, because I do want this podcast to be about uh, us enthusing about stuff. And I will find some things to enthuse about, but the first few minutes of this is like, the one guy summing up the plot of the TV show very quickly, and then Eco and Lewis Tan getting into a little fight in a nightclub. And you're like, okay, great. Like, it's a Netflix movie. There's obviously the research has gone in that suggests enough people have watched Wu Assassins that if you like Wu Assassins, you will like Fistful of Vengeance. We know what they want. They want to see some fights and shit. But the first fight kicked off, and I was like, Oh no, this isn't very well edited. Oh, is this what the whole movie's going to be like? And then the whole movie was like that. The whole it managed to be a movie that was like 80% action and 2% of that action was engaging to me. Yeah. It, it was so frustrating. But again, it just it, I think it is it comes down to that lack of jeopardy. I think I think cuz Again, it's weird when you look at this film and you pull apart all the parts and you pull apart everything it is. There's nothing really that you could say they've done that wrong. It looks beautiful. The acting, you know, there's no like real clanger performances or anything like that. The script's a bit exposition heavy. You're I mean, the whole head. script is nonsense. Really. Like, yeah. why are they in Thailand for reasons? <laughs> and then they're like, we do need to introduce some new characters. So two of the Two of the characters are just like, mm, I went to Thailand once, so I know yeah. someone who is here. Here she is. And then and then Lewis Tan's character is like, I met a woman in London once, and here she also is. And we both have a romantic backstory with them for also reasons. See, I just assumed anyone who had a backstory that joined a character was in the series. That's Neither the, of them. That's the way my brain just went. No, yeah. neither of the um, neither of the sort of uh, female quote unquote goodies were um, were in the series. The 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 British sounding lady and the South African sounding there you lady. Go. But yeah, I mean, like it's it's weird again. Like the action, like you say, they clearly choreographed the fights well, and the guys who are doing it and the girls who are doing it, um, they're great. They're really and they've fighters. trained, and that's what's so annoying. And afterwards, I went on a little internet deep dive, and I saw on like Lewis Tan's. Twitter or Instagram, some behind the scenes stuff of them choreographing all the shit. And like, they did all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's and just it, again, shot badly. It's like, that's the thing. There's um to use eco wise, um, sort of own back catalog. There's a shot in the raid where I can't remember if he sweeps him or whatever, but basically it's a takedown shot and the camera follows the action. So when it slams into the ground, the camera's tilted and turned. And I remember it's one of the first time I've ever seen that shot done in that way and so well. And it really right. made me go, whoa. Whereas this, the camera tries to follow the action, but it has no purpose. It's the difference between shooting coverage and planning the shots for the fight scene. And this has a lot of very wide stuff. There's like a fucking, like drone shots of the action or like a big sweeping you know around the area these big spacious areas that like in hong kong movies as soon as they enter one of those like big studio sets you're like this is gonna be fucking amazing because that's where other cool fights take place in this they're like we're in a foundry and there's sparks flying and you're like all right and somehow it just doesn't look yeah like that that foundry felt very I don't think most of that set did not feel practical. Felt very 
as if it had been green screen. I don't. Oh, really? I I didn't note that so much, but I I, I, don't, I don't know if that is the case, but that's how it felt. But yeah, there's stuff where the the camera was like, like I think in an action film, and and again, this is why you have people who are very good at making action films. There's a thing where you know the camera is like an active participator, where if the camera is gonna do a thing where it follows a move, it's to essentially enhance the impact of what you see. So I think like the certain ways of doing it, like I say that takedown in the raid is a very good example of a takedown where the camera, you know, it adds so the audience feels the blow and feels the disorientation of it. Uh, another good example of like an active camera is uh, Old Boy, the trekking scene in the corridor. It's one of the first times I think I've ever seen that sort of wide lock shot where you realise what the character has to overcome is a wall. And the right. only way for you to film that is to watch that struggle in real time. Right. And that log camera. And again, it becomes an active camera because you suddenly see the overwhelming sort of task ahead slash in old boy, you know. Well, in old boy, it's like, you know, you're not like, oh my God, this guy's a martial arts expert. Look at him move. It's just like, holy shit, this guy is just like fighting for his life. And it's the first time he says it. It's like, does, you know. Um, training, you know, theorized training uh, relate to practical situation. But yeah, like, so, you know, the camera is always thought about, like, how do I enhance what the character's going through in this moment? And I think that's where this whole film sort of unraveled was you never were in the characters, you're never behind them. Like, they were just very sort of cutscene video game characters in terms of you kind of got a sense of this, but even like the world ending Jeopardy. Just didn't feel like any jeopardy. So, like, you weren't in that struggle. Like, again, which, you know, if you, we go back to uh, Rage and Fire, you feel like when they're on the streets in Rage and Fire, they, every turn is a potential kill shot. Like, every time they pop their head out or they run into an action scene, that is potentially threatening. Whereas this, you just yeah, feel cause like... Yeah, because, like, people are, pe loads of people die in that movie, right? Yeah. There's, like, people getting mown down. Whereas this, it's just, like... Everyone's a martial arts expert, I guess. Yeah. And then no one gets shot. No one gets barely injured. The supernatural stuff is like, I guess they were like, we let's play it down a little bit so that we can make some cool action scenes. But is then it the based whole. Is it anything or is it, is it original IP? Do you know? I do not know that, I'm afraid, Matt. I'm going to Google that whilst you do your point. You could do you could do the live Googling. But then the yeah. whole point of it is he is this like immortal warrior type thing and the bat and the baddies are like super powerful supernatural things who but who can also just be killed if you stab them with a stick or who are actually not that good at like fighting or anything yeah so that also sort of like completely undermines the supernatural point like if you want it to be supernatural fine but what are we doing but again, that that was my problem with when we watched The Matrix. My problem with The Matrix in those larger action scenes is they think that having larger numbers to fight is more enticing than having, you know, a real element to fight. Like, there's something about, oh, I can turn anyone into a baddie. That's fine. That's fine. But it doesn't have the same drive as, imagine these baddies who are trying to take over the world had fanatics fighting for them. Fanatics who will literally kill themselves to accomplish someone else's goal. You suddenly then have this thing again, like, oh God, we're up against these absolute psychopaths who buy into this rhetoric, even though they know it will end life on Earth. That's kind of what um, the original Doctor Strange is, the baddies in that. They buy into the rhetoric of, you know, destruction and, and cleansing and all that stuff. Whereas if it is just a case of, I'm going to engineer some bodies. It did remind me of The Matrix at points, actually, with that, where it was just like, there's a lot of action technically happening but i'm not it's not and i guess all these people trained and they put the work in and fair play but why isn't it why doesn't it feel engaging but that the other side of this as well is like collateral and stuff like that when they have that first big fight uh, against people who are being turned into these villains even then when you're sort of like i don't know what's going on as a fresh thingy you're like why are these people so okay with killing 
innocence. Yeah, that's true. Even even though that you know you get one it, lady's it's... power is just shooting people. She just yeah. shoots everyone. Kill or, kill or be killed, you get. But there's sort of no like we can't let this happen to innocence. Like there's no collateral about it and stuff like that. Like it's a case of like. It's not like what they're zombies and for? it's like, we've lost them already. It's just exactly. like, they've just like, oh, she's controlling them. <laughs> is there, is there any, any way we can get these guys back? Not now. I've literally I've shot a lot of them in the yeah. face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, are, are they gone? Aren't they gone? And it, it just, again, like, if you just, instead of like trying to come up with people who walk out of a fight and then call back to a conversation earlier, that's like, like, imagine being in a fight and then uh, saying something like, oh, I can't remember what it is. Oh, good timing, I think it is. Imagine yeah. your instincts, like, I get it, you fought a lot, you sort of thing, and you've got to have a bit of gallows humour when you're in this line of work. But, like, for me, I'd be like, fucking hell. Yeah. What is going on? Like They like- do try and chuck in a few of those little sort of, like, cheesy one-liners, and I've got time for those a lot of the time, but, again, it just, it just they just don't sit. Like, nothing about this movie feels right. It feels like it was generated by an algorithm. It feels like, like, the, uh, and the, I don't know, uh, I, I do know the director now. Uh, his name is Raoul René. Oh, yeah, um, so the guy who's doing the, um, the new Halo movie, isn't it? He's doing um, series. a couple of episodes of it, yep. Yeah, series, isn't it? Yeah. Dutch guy, so, you know, I feel there's a, you know, a connection there. I'm proud that uh, he's... It, what's weird is his, like, filmography includes several award-winning films and then a slew of straight-to-video sequels to, like, Hard Target, The Man With The Iron Fists, The Marine... I mean, so, I've got a lot of time for all those titles. To th- and, fair. you know, this podcast is for celebrating that sort of shit. So I, I guess it's like, well, he's got the chops to shoot action. And, you know, action happens and he does shoot it. And he clearly also has a drone license because, like, there's a lot of drone shots Some in it. Very, very good drone shots in it. But again, it's it, it, drone shots which doesn't add anything to the action. Yeah, it, again, it looks pretty, but, it, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't sort of. It's just weird. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to be negative about this film because it's. You don't, a, it's <laughs> all right. Well, we got to start the podcast again. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like we we have been, but it's it's not a terrible film. Like it's not a one two star film. It's a very low end. I'm giving it. I'm giving it two stars. But like uh, again, it's I'm sorry it's, that's out there now. It's it's one of those things where I don't understand why it's like this because there are elements that really work like i say so the action really works but again it's a lesson in if you don't care for the people you're watching and the people don't care for the people they're trying to protect or save and you've got nothing to get under it like your action has to be just implicitly i don't know your action has to be next level action yeah you've got to i felt i'm not invested in any character in this entire movie and, and you know, no spoilers, but, like, none of them are ever in any real jeopardy where you think, oh, fuck, I don't think they're going to make it out of this. Yeah. I really I really hate this because, like you say, we didn't want to do this sort of film. No. And, again, this, this films I've watched are so much worse. And it just, <laughs> yeah. Again, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a, just a weird thing, isn't it? It's, it's not even I, – I don't even think it's a bad film. I, just I think, think lo- film. plenty of people will watch this on Netflix and they yeah. will all think it's fine. Um, but also – I think action fans will watch this who are fans of these actors, especially Eco, who are going to be disappointed. It's a film that has Eco fighting for half the movie and yet somehow makes it not look that great. I don't, there's one fight scene that's shot on a fucking motion control robot. I mean, I, it's sort of the idea is it's, cool. It's weird. I, I wonder if they rush post as well because there's a um, uh, spoilers. There's a neck snap, and the blow just doesn't land. And there's a bit where he's talking to a character after he's knocked her down, and they just have what feels like ADR hidden behind a thing. Right. And you can't you can't tell if they're stylistic choices, or maybe it's just a thing with Netflix. Maybe they are producing so much stuff that they just don't have that extra couple of days to get it. So, like, they've got big budgets, but maybe it's a time thing? I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I get... wish I knew. I wish yeah. I knew. I mean, it, in fairness, Eco doesn't say a lot in this movie. Like, 
They no. they know why he's there, and that is to beat people up. And you know he, he does, but it's not the it's not great. Yeah, all the all the elements are there, but they just don't work. I will, I'll say this though, and because uh, I don't want you to go away and go, ah, oh, I'll give that a miss. It's ninety minutes. Yeah, it is short. It might it might it might be if you come in late at night, you're just like, I want to watch something, but got not much time, and you want to sort of half watch it. This film's great for that. Like if you just want. A McDonald's Wallpaper. of a film. Yeah. yeah. A McDonald's of a film. You just want something to fill your belly. If you've but- been to Thailand and you're like, oh, I'd love to like see some images of Thailand a lot. Maybe you'll enjoy it on that level. Yeah. Remember when we went on that boat in Thailand? Oh, look, they've got that boat. Oh, they've got a tuk-tuk. Oh, look, there's a, a, a building. Or if you mm-hmm. live in Thailand and you want to say, oh, I wonder how they, uh, what was going on that day I couldn't get home. That's for, right. For 20 minutes. Uh, um, Let's wrap it up. I think um, I've said everything I, I want to yeah. say. I think you get my vibes on this one. I had high hopes, and I'm I'm afraid they were somewhat dashed. Um, I don't want to shit all over a movie, but it 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 is a brand new movie, and it's lovely to talk about something as it's coming out. Um, I, I wish I could recommend it more. Yeah, your mileage may vary. That's how I'll leave it. That sounds good to me. Before we finish talking about this movie though yeah. what is your action a replay a moment you already know it is a good it's a good bit he slams his foot down kicks the handle of a walk the walk hits someone in the head it's a great little snappy move in the middle of a, a fight sequence that is pretty good actually yeah i throughout the movie i was like what is my action replay moment what it I think maybe it'll just have to be the bit that is the motion control camera because I was kind of like technically like, oh, I think they're filming this on a motion control robot because that camera is whizzing around. Um, yeah, but, I, but what happened in the scene? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> Sorry, everyone involved. I know you did your best. I don't know where, where we can lay the blame. Um, have you watched this movie? Do you disagree or do you agree? Let us know by getting in touch. I think, yeah, that's, I think that's it. I think we're out. I think we're done. <laughs> um, Matthew, you seem to have forgotten the oh, um, forgot new addition new to the yeah, podcast did, from last time. Ah. The action movie trivia cards. Um, here we go. Here we go. Let's keep this nice and short. I'm just going to, I'm taking the next one. Okay. There's no funny business. Okay. What is Inspector Scott Roper's speciality in the movie Metro? Do you remember that movie and who it stars? I don't think I've ever seen Metro. Um, It is an Eddie Murphy movie set in, I believe, San Francisco. Maybe I've seen this. Give me, give me the multiple choices and I'll see if it rings a bell. Okay, multiple choices are dog handling, organised crime, hostage negotiation, diving. I feel like it might be hostage negotiation. Is that your final answer? I'm going to say yes. You have got it right, Matthew. You yes. are back next week to fight for the title. Oh. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, a little throwback to um, a uh, little uh, little scene, little known, little appreciated Eddie Murphy movie from, I want to say, the 1990s. I can't remember if it's any good. I think it's fine. Um, that's all for this episode. I hope for the next one, I'm, I think I'm going to make it my mission to find something that we will probably enjoy. That sounds like yeah. a good one, doesn't it? Get us back on uh, enthusiastic track. Sorry if it's been a bit of a downer. Just, you know, I'm just being honest, mate. You live in the Netherlands long enough and you realise that honesty can sometimes be quite painful. <laughs> uh, if you want to get in touch, I'm uh, at Simon Fielder on um, pretty much everything. Matthew, uh, you've got a couple of different ones, haven't you? At Matt Titan on Twitter. It's Matt Titan on Insta. Uh, Matt Titan in real life. In real life. If you see you, if you, you see don't me. have to use the at. No, but the full name. The full name. <laughs> Matthew Elizabeth Hyten. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, that's all for episode seven and Fistful of Vengeance. We will Bye. see you Bye. in two weeks' time. Bye. Keep keep kicking. Yeah, keep keep kicking. <laughs> yes, yes. It was so natural. <laughs> you remember it. It's so, so good natural. to say it. it it's a really so exciting way to end. <laughs> oh, you just get trail out. I'm already fading at this point. Yeah, yeah. we're gone, mate. We are gone. <laughs>